Yeah. Um, equipment doesn't make a quality podcast. Graphics don't make a quality podcast. I mean, sure, all those things are important. And do they play into the overall brand and feel? Sure. Uh, but I think people will get way too bogged down and use equipment and media hosts and, um, and uh, you know, metadata tagging and yeah. all that stuff as excuses to not get started because oh, I just don't know what I'm going to do. How's it going, everybody? Xander Fryer, CEO and founder of High Impact Coaching here uh, with Travis Chappell, the CEO and founder of Build Your Network, an amazing podcast, and uh, frankly, a lot of amazing stuff that you're doing with the, with the podcasting space, the networking space. Um, Travis, excited to get you on the show. Welcome, brother. Yeah, bro. Thanks so much for having me. Happy to be on. Awesome. Awesome. And so uh, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, Travis is an avid podcaster, avid networker, very successful coach. Um, and frankly, a, a great, um, connector, if you will. I think that's, you know, one of the ways I like to call, uh, what you do, but, uh, Travis, I'd love for everybody to just kind of hear a bit more about build your network, about everything that you're doing. And then I'd, I'd love to kind of dig into, um, obviously, you know, number one, the power of networking and how it can, how it can build your influence, how it can build your business. Um, the power of podcasting, everything that you've been able to do just over the last like few years, which is just amazing. Um, and we can kind of, we can kind of pull out some lessons for our, our audience from that, if you will. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, build your network started that show in August of 2017. So now it's been about a year and a half or excuse me, two and a half years, yeah. um, that we've been cranking out episodes, but it's been three a week. So we're actually coming up on episode 400, which is crazy to me to Damn. think about, um, 400 episodes coming out. And then um, a couple of things that I'm excited about that I'm working on these days. Um, we actually just launched a brand new show. Uh, we have one episode out uh, on that show to sell you like it is literally brand new. Um, so we just launched that show uh, this past week. It's called World Class. Um, so it, it allows me to kind of branch outside of the entrepreneurship, just business space and talk to anybody that's just killing it and whatever it is that they may be doing. Um, allows me to talk to more like comedians and yeah. you know, journalists or athletes, you know, different people like that. Not necessarily are, they're, they're not necessarily like entrepreneurs, but they're kind of like solopreneurs in that like celebrity space. So, yeah. um, uh, so that's who we're kind of talking to on world class. And then I uh, kind sounds of, like, sounds like a lot of self-development, a lot of like what it actually takes to become sure. world class probably. Yeah. Re reverse engineering the, the habits, the mindset, the work yeah. ethic of the people who are world-class performers, no matter what it is that they're world-class at. Yeah. Um, it's really just kind of, you know, reverse engineering those types of things. So well, and I think that's that, you know, this is something that you and I kind of connected on when, when I was on Breckenridge for your guys mastermind, it's like you, you also like, just like me, like you're a very avid self-development person. You're, you're very passionate about that growth and that self-work. How, how has that affected your business and everything that you've been doing over the last few years? I mean, it's everything, bro. Like I, I think, I think I used to have this like skewed idea of what personal development looked like because I wasn't always like this. Like I, I hated, I hated reading growing up, man. Like I, yeah. I it was like pulling teeth to try to get me to read anything. And um, I, I just did, I didn't listen to audio. I didn't do any of those things. Yep. I, I, I almost would even like make fun of people who did because um, in the context that I was, uh, that I knew them in, I, I, I looked at myself as more successful because I made more money um, just because I was knocking doors. But like, yeah. I, I was always just like, oh, you know, like those people are, they're just like thinkers, you know, I'm a doer, you know, I'm a, yeah, I'm I would like, I would excuse yeah. it away. Uh, but, but ultimately, um, it, I couldn't, couldn't deny the fact that if I wanted to continue to grow and if I wanted to continue to push myself that I, I needed to start adopting some of those habits. And, um, I, I think I had this skewed idea that, that if that, that personal development was going to like, that I was going to read some piece of knowledge that was going to make me a different person, yeah. but it's not the information that makes you different. It's the habits that you build along the way that makes you different. Yeah. It's and living it that makes sure. you different. Sure. Yeah. Right. Like becoming that person, right? Like becoming the King Arthur that can pull Excalibur from, you know what I mean? Like that, like yeah. that's the journey. The journey is, is becoming the next person that's capable of achieving the next thing you want to achieve. Um, not just like willing your current self into achieving the next thing. That yeah. It's becoming, it's becoming that bigger version of yourself. It's so like, I, one of my favorite things that I actually tell people is like, Oh, you've got this goal to do X, Y, Z. Well, what if I told you that you don't deserve it right now? 
Hmm. Like that's not that's not what most self development would tell you, but yep. it's kind of along the same lines. It's like and right now who you are is not good enough for that. Yep, exactly. You don't deserve it. Like you still suck. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like like I'll tell people that I'll tell my clients that when it when it comes to podcasting with like podcast coaching and consulting, some of the yeah. different stuff that we do is just like just be okay with the fact that you're probably going to suck for a while. Yeah. And that's just part of the process. So get over it. Like I, nobody likes to hear their voice. I didn't like hearing my voice when I launched my show. I think you've got but, a beautiful voice, Travis. So uh, uh, thank you, man. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. I've, I've come around over the years, but like the first time you hear it, it's just like, Oh, what am I, why do I sound like that? Like, you know what I mean? So, um, so it's not, it's not really bad on those things, you know, like you, you've got to be willing to put in the work and at the beginning, you're, you're probably not going to have the success that you want because you don't deserve the audience of a million people yet Yeah. because you haven't like earned the right to be able to talk to that many people. And even if somebody else handed you their existing platform, like say somebody hands you their channel of a million YouTube subscribers yeah. and you've never done it before, you're probably going to lose a lot of those subscribers and not have an actively engaged audience because you're yep. still not good at it. Like it's not enough to have the result. You have to go through the journey to get the result because that's part of getting the result is it's the developing journey. Developing the mastery in the thing. Yep, exactly. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. And, and you and I, you, we're, we're connected through a mutual friend, Craig Valentine. I think one of the things that mm -hmm. I love that he says, cause he's like, he's he, like, I always say that like we teach people Instagram, like, nobody's business but craig is the king of instagram hmm. um and he always tells people he's like he's like yeah i might have a hundred thousand followers but give me your account with a thousand people and i'll make more money from your account than you do with mine hmm. right because it's not the number it's he's yeah. mastered a skill set sure that he can leverage it doesn't matter where the number is yeah so. Yeah, real simple example would be like a photographer, right? If you take yeah. an expert photographer and give them crappy gear, they'll create amazing photographs. Yeah. You give an amateur photographer, um, you know, $25,000 camera and a bunch of awesome lenses and perfect lighting, they're still going to have crappy stuff. Still going to be crap. It's like, yeah. Yeah. It's, I love it's it, man. the person. Yeah. Beautiful. So let's, let's go back to, to when you first started Build Your Network. So what, like, what got you into podcasting? Why podcasting and and you know, how obviously, how did that launch your business from there? Yeah, so I told you I, I didn't like personal development, but I got to the point where I, I felt like I really just had to start jumping into it. And so that was at that point in my life where I felt like I really got to just jump into this stuff and, and, and figure this thing out. So I um, started reading a little bit, uh, but it was mostly audio. Uh, I'm just I'm more of an audio type of a learner. And so I yeah. started listening to audio books and started uh, listening to podcasts. And came across this one podcast with a guy in there. His name is John Lee Dumas. And he said, you know, like, if you want to start your own show, you know, go to here and take this and all that stuff. And so I took a free course on podcasting. And um, I, I always felt like I had kind of a propensity toward some form of you, content you, creation. On, I, would, on, I wouldn't. Entrepreneur on fire, right? Yeah, twice. Yeah. That's, that's so funny that that's like yep. the start of the whole process. <laughs> yep. Yep. It was just listening. Yeah. And, uh, and, and consuming. Um, and I, 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 at that time when I was first started thinking about starting a podcast, I, I felt like I had a decent propensity toward some form of content creation, although I wouldn't have said like, oh yeah, I'm good at content creation because I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. Um, but uh, I always felt like I was decent at writing papers for like schoolwork and college and stuff, even though I wasn't an avid reader. I felt like I could write pretty decent papers comparatively to all the other students and stuff. And, but I never liked the idea of blogging. So that's why I never started the blog because I was like, I don't want to write. That sounds boring as shit. Like I don't want to be doing that with my time. Um, so when I basically, when I found podcasting and took that course in podcasting, I was basically, I was basically just like, hey, this is essentially an audio blog, which is, sounds way more interesting to me than actually typing out long blog articles yeah. with like footnotes and all that I'm stuff. right there with you, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, uh, I, I just jumped on it and I, I didn't really know what to talk about. So I, I knew enough at the time to know that I needed to niche down to something. Um, so all of my past experience was in sales. So I figured, oh, I'll start a sales podcast. And I yeah. go to iTunes and I type in sales and there's like 60,000 podcasts that talk about sales. And I was like, well, it's going to be difficult for me as a 20, uh, at the time I was 23, I think. Uh, so like as a 23 year old to be teaching sales and in, in like, you know, this hall of fame of sales legends that I'll have podcasts about it. Like it's gonna be difficult yeah. for me to stand out in that space. And so 
I didn't go after sales. Um, I was like, well, what's the second thing, right? Like besides sales, what's the other reason for the success that I've seen in sales? And it, to me, it was always just, I got around the person that was doing it best and I spent as much time with them as I possibly could, which to me was like, oh, it's just networking, right? So I go to iTunes expecting there to be 60,000 networking podcasts and there just wasn't, there weren't, there really wasn't any yeah. um, that only focused on the one topic. You, so you found like, your there's, there's blue money. ocean basically. Yeah, right. Exactly. There, there, there was the blue ocean for me and I, I kind of jumped in there. That's awesome, man. So you start build your network. Um, obviously, it's it like it's it's in a blue ocean. Um, what really what really do you think like allowed it to just take off from there? And because you you've interviewed some amazing people on the podcast, um, you know, like what really allowed you to scale it from there? The guests, yeah, the guests yeah. and my relationships with other people to get on their shows. I never yeah. spent any money on advertising or any of that stuff. Um, it was just the fact that I got quality guests, uh, which creates quality content. And so whenever I got traction from other interviews I did in other shows, I kept a lot of that traffic because my show was also quality. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's the biggest thing in any form of content creation that you have to put out quality stuff. And I knew that at the beginning and I knew uh, self-awareness coming in key there. I knew that I wasn't going to be good at it from the very beginning because I was a newbie. Yeah. And so I was like, what's a, like the best hack for me to create quality content is to get quality guests. Get other so I bring people on the best create, people. Create the yeah. content for exactly. me. So I All I have to do is ask a couple <laughs> questions and they'll just, they're just going to talk and then like they're going to be the reason that people tune into my show. Not for me, but eventually it's going to flip and it will be for me. Yeah. Um, and, um, and so I just kind of did that hoping it would work out. Yeah. Seems, seems simple, right? It's a podcast around sure. building your network. Exactly. Right? Just building your network on the podcast. Exactly. So it was cool because I got to learn. I wouldn't have called myself a networking expert. Maybe I would have at the very beginning, but it would have been in, it would have been foolishly uh, yeah. calling myself that. Um, I, I had no idea how to do it. I'd never been to a business event even. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, was starting this podcast about networking and didn't know anything about networking. But that's the cool thing about content creation is that as long as you don't position yourself as the expert, right? You don't have to be the douchebag that's like, oh, fake it till you make it. Let me buy three, you know, let me lease a Lamborghini for the day and take the picture and all that kind of stuff. You don't have yeah. to do that. Um, but just be honest with your audience. Just say like, look, I'm on this journey with you. Let's take this journey together. Um, and then it so builds, it, it even builds better rapport that way. It's sure. rather than being up on the pedestal, you're, you're down yeah. in the trenches with you them. can relate you can relate yeah. with your audience and you can have real conversations with them about how we can all improve on this journey together. And so um, I was able to have conversations with people that I really enjoyed talking with. I was able to ask them their best networking tactics, their best connecting and relationship building tips. And then I just used all the stuff that I was learning from the people I was talking to, to continue to get better and better people. And then yeah. through getting better and better people, the advice that I got was better and better, which then I implemented. To, you know what I'm saying? It was just like getting, this wheel. You're getting free coaching at the same time. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It was just like this, uh, this wheel of, um, of turning out uh, good results for both my knowledge and my, yeah. and, and my, and my network and really for my podcast too. I love it. Yeah. And this was, you know, this was something like when, when I was at your mastermind, this was something that kind of really opened my eyes up to podcasting is just like, like the, all the, all the benefits that you were talking about, like building your network, but you're also getting different perspectives and different coaching from the people that you're, you're talking about. You're having other people create great, great content with and for you. Mm -hmm. um, and you're also building really intimate relationships with, with all of your followers, because it's, it's one of the platforms that like when people, I think you and I were talking about, it, it's like when somebody pushes play on a podcast, right? It's like, if you're watching a Facebook video, they'll watch, most people will watch the first like 30 seconds, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. When you push play on a podcast, it's something like, what was the stat you told me? Like 80%? Yeah, 85% 80, of podcast listeners claim they listen to all or most of an episode after they hit play. Yeah. So which where, is crazy. Where, where like I'm shooting for a three, for, three second view on Instagram. Right, exactly. Like a 30 second view on YouTube. Like people mm -hmm. are listening to 30, 40, 60, 90 minutes of a podcast. Exactly. Yeah. Which is the reason Joe Rogan is like the king of the world now. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like because people have him in, in their ear every for three hours, Yeah, you know, like three hour episodes and people still listen to that. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. So, so we have, obviously we have a lot of, a lot of coaches uh, in our audience. Um, I'd love to just kind of dig in to, to two things. Number one, you mentioned networking being really important. Um, I would love to hear some of your tips to, to help, you know, coaches and starting entrepreneurs learn how to network better. And then number two, I'd love to dig into podcasts specifically and how you view those being uh, beneficial because you, you and I had a very unique conversation around like how podcasting isn't just about creating an audience, how it's not just about getting people into your world, but actually generating leads as yeah. well. So I'd love to dig into yeah. both of those things if you wouldn't mind. 
Yeah, for sure. Um, so networking stuff, the first thing that I always tell people is if you want to be a good networker, you have to learn how to add value on a level that's different than everybody else. And yeah. you and I are in a mastermind run by a guy named Dan Fleischman and Joel Marion too. And, and Joel has a lot of his strengths and he's a master at the value add too. Um, but I would say even more so would be Dan. He's just mastered the ability to add value to anybody in any situation. Yeah. And it's enabled him to be able to connect with the top people in the entire world, literally. Yeah. Um, and bring them into our mastermind. Um, but, uh, but it just yeah. has. And I, what I tell people is that, um, your network will always increase in direct proportion to the amount of value that you can add to others. So that's why another reason why it's so important to continue with your self-development, to continue with your knowledge base, to continue right. honing your craft. Because every time you get better at that, every time you uh, learn something new, you're becoming a more valuable asset for people, not just for yourself, but for everybody else that's in your network. When you become a more valuable person, it raises the value of your entire network, um, which then is going to allow you to connect with people that are on a different level than you because you actually have value to add to those people. That's yeah. why if you're listening to this right now and you're just getting started on all this, that's why you can't go have a conversation with you know, Gary Vaynerchuk at his office one-on-one -on -one and, and like just be able to pull it off or go to Grant Cardone's office or like hang out with Joel Marion or, or like, or yeah. you know, you, you can't do those things because you just don't have, you don't have the you don't have the value exchange there. Like there's no reason that that person should make time in their schedule for you specifically, or else they would have to make time in their schedule for everybody that reached out to them all the time, which would literally people, be impossible. Yeah. People forget that. Like when you're at that level, like once you're, once you're successful in making money, like your most important resource is your time. A hundred percent. Right. Yeah. So all, like, all these guys don't care about money anymore. Yeah. They got a shit None of them. Of money. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, if there's, if, and I think one of my, one, it's so funny. Cause like, I don't know if this happens to you, but I get people that reach out to me cause they know, they know the rule that you just explained. It's like, I need to bring them value. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I'll get people that reach out to me and say, Xander, how can I bring you value? No. <laughs> and my, my, my first thought is the fact that you're making me answer this yeah. is taking value away. Yep. Exactly. It's taking my time. It's taking thought. It's taking focus. Exactly. And it comes, the whole reason to add value is, is you always be, have to be willing to add value without the expectation of receiving anything in return. Like you, like the whole purpose of adding value is that it's not agenda based. And when you ask somebody, how can I add value to you? It comes with this like secret nonverbal this agreement. layer of filth right. underneath that, that you just get the feeling that like, if I give this person something to add, they're going to have an ask. Like there's an ask buried in this value somewhere. And I don't have the time to figure out what the value is. But even if I did, I probably still wouldn't give you an answer because I know you're just going to ask me for something immediately as soon as I deliver, yeah. as soon as you deliver on this piece of value to me. It's your job. If you want to add value to somebody, it's your job to figure out how you can do that. Um, yeah. It's not their job. Once you, once you ask, it takes away the entire reason to say it in the first place. Because um, now you just gave them a piece of homework. And, yeah. um, uh, when, Which inherently you know, takes away the value. Right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So, cause, and it's so funny to think of it because like traditional, traditional networking, you're, you're taught like, okay, um, you know, connect. Obviously, you have to connect with people on a personal level. Then you have to bring them value, right? And then you're able to, to get something in return, like the altruistic principle. But exactly like you just mentioned, whenever you approach it that way, like the un there's like an underlying like hint of this is not verbal wrong. contract. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's it, you're doing it backwards. You're not doing it. Like you should, you should always approach it and like, I'm going to connect with you. I'm going to give you something because that's what I want to do. I exactly. want to help you. And, and you just have to trust that the law of reciprocity is always going to reign true. Yeah. It just is. It, well, and, it, and you may not even be from that person, right? Like that person may not ever give anything back to you. Yeah, then, there we go. It's going to come back on you. It's like you and I see it all the time when you're at these higher levels with people like Dan Fleischman and, and Joel Marion. And like, it, you see that like, they're the people that are making the most and the most connected. And at the same time, they're the most giving of right. their, their funds, their time, their energy, their focus. Yep. Right. And you wonder why, you know, Joel Marion makes a hundred million dollars a year. It's like, yep. it's because he does nothing but give. Yep. It's yep. crazy. Exactly. And we had that conversation on his podcast where we were talking about, and, and when I had him on my show, when we were talking about his initial, um, like rise into, into bio trust and the way that he was able to build that company, it was all based on value. Like yeah. 
basically a publisher couldn't sell the book that he wrote. So Joel went and built relationships with like 17, 18 of the top 20 affiliate marketers in the world on ClickBank at the time. And then, and then, um, relaunched the same book that the publisher couldn't sell a year later. And the first week did a half a million dollars through the new network that he had built Yeah, and, and continued to add value to that network, had a couple, you know, million dollar launches. Uh, several million dollar launches with other ebooks and products and things that he did. And then eventually it was just like, well, why am I referring all this business away? Let me just make my own supplement company. And then in year one, they made a hundred million dollars. It's not even like they're just making a hundred million dollars. Now first 12 months of business to make a hundred million dollars without like, without a crazy ad budget. And like, you know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's unheard of. It's unprecedented. And the yeah. only reason he was able to do that was the value that he brought to his network. Everybody was willing to help him out when he needed help. When he had an ask, everybody wanted to, to help the guy out because he was always so focused on value. And every top like connected person that I know is the same way. Jordan Harbinger runs a show, 6 million downloads a month on, on Apple Podcasts, one of the top shows um, out there. And uh, his whole show got taken from him when he, because he had another show for about a decade and they got about 3 million downloads a month. Um, had discrepancies with the business partners. He like basically got fired from his own show that he built um, and then uh, had to start from scratch. But when he started from scratch, he reached into his network with all the people. Not, that he he's not actually starting from scratch. Exactly. Not, yeah. He, he reached into a decade long of connections with people where he just added value freely without ever thinking about what it's going to look like when I get this back. But when he did have an ask, when life slapped him in the face and he had to start from scratch again, he had reached into his network and now his show now is twice as successful as his past show ever was. Um, and within like a year of starting that show. Um, so yeah, man, it's all about the value add. You got it. You got to learn how to add value to people and not be upset if they don't give value back to you. And I think, now, I think you can guard that though. Yeah, at the, at the core of it too, you, you, you know, I do want to echo it's, it, you know, you, in order to bring value, you have to be valuable. Yes, exactly. Right? Yeah. And, I, and I'm whatever not sitting, it is, I'm, I'm not right. sitting here saying that everybody's invaluable, right. but you got to work on yourself a bit. <laughs> right, exactly. And at every stage, you're going to have different things to offer, right? So yeah. like when I first started, when I first got to know JLD, uh, Johnny Dumas, uh, I, I, I didn't have much to offer at that point. I had zero online business. All I was at that point was a door-to-door -door salesperson. Like I had zero online business. I had zero podcasting experience. I had zero connections. Like the most, uh, the, the, the person that made the most money that I knew personally at that time was making $150,000 a year. I never even met a millionaire, let alone had anybody in my network that was worth that much money. So like I didn't have any connections. I didn't have any money to offer. Like John had me beat on every single point. Yeah. But the one thing I did know that he didn't have was a lot of time. So I offered three days of my time to work a booth for him for free at an event that he was speaking at to sell journals for him because I offered a skill set, my sales ability, and time. Three days of eight-hour work days for free without any commission on journal sales just to help him out because yeah. that was all I had to offer at the time. But that just proves that everybody listening has something to offer. It just is when you, when you make yourself a more valuable person, that value add is way easier. Like it's way easier now for me to add value to somebody because I can either make a connection to somebody that's valuable in my network. I can buy one of their products or programs or services. I can uh, uh, be an affiliate for them and send them deals and make them money. Like there's so many other ways that I can add value to people now without taking three full days of my time and volunteering to like hawk journals at a, at a convention. You know yeah. what I mean? But when you were it's first starting, proves. when you were first starting, that's all was, I had. That was all you had. You know, it's like, but uh, I did it. Yeah. I was, I was reading, I was reading a book the other day and it talked about, um, president Garfield and how he got started. Like he got started being the janitor at his college because hmm. that was the only, he didn't have enough money to pay for tuition. So basically like he convinced the, the, the Dean there basically like, I'll be the janitor in the mornings if you let me attend. Yeah. And it's like, you get, he had to do that to get the ball rolling. And then literally like four years later or whatever, he was not only was he graduated, but he was a professor there, right? Like you got to mm. start wherever you're at yep. and, and don't, don't let your pride, don't let your ego get in the way. Don't pretend mm -hmm. like you're better than that yet because you haven't built yourself to that person yet. Exactly. It is definitely a punch to the gut in the ego sense. Cause especially in the door to door space, like I looked at myself as being really good and yeah. a lot of people looked up to me and I felt like I had, you know, made a name in the circles that I was in for being really good at that thing. And so if, when I started over in podcasting, it was literally starting over for me and I, I, I had to 
start at the very bottom again and work my way up. And, uh, uh, but I, I wasn't the guy that was out there, like I said, faking it till I make it and hoping nobody was going to find out that I was a fraud. You know, I was just really sincere and honest about it and, uh, just try to position myself in a credible way going forward. That's awesome. I love it, man. Uh, I think there's, there's probably, I'm going to re-listen to this part of this episode just cause there's so many little nuggets in here. That was great. Um, uh, did want to dig into the podcasting a little yeah. bit. So I think there's, I think there's a lot of coaches out there that know that a podcast could be great to start to get their message out. Um, but you've done some amazing stuff and, and for everybody out there, you guys should absolutely check out Travis Chappell's like his website, everything he's doing around podcasting. I know you're coming out with a product soon as well. Um, but I'd love to kind of hear from you. Like what are, what, what are some of the, the tips and tricks that you have for people to get up and running the most important things? And obviously some of the things that you should just not worry about. Sure. So, um, most important things would be focusing on your content. Yeah. Um, equipment doesn't make a quality podcast. Graphics don't make a quality podcast. I mean, sure. All those things are important and do they play into the overall brand and feel? Sure. Uh, but I think people will get way too bogged down and use equipment and media hosts and, um, and uh, you know, metadata tagging and yeah. all that stuff as excuses to not get started because oh, I just don't know what I'm going to do. Um, focus on the content. Everything else is totally fine. Uh, so what I tell people is like, uh, like this, this setup that I have right here, this is my home office setup. Um, this is a ATR 2100 microphone with a $2 pop filter and a uh, $13 boom arm that's hooked up to my desk. The whole setup cost me $83. Um, and it makes, I've used it for two and a half years. I just upgraded my, my studio setup last week just because we got a studio space for in-person interviews and I basically had to. Um, but yeah. I've used this same like cheap, easy microphone setup since day one and it's always been totally fine. So don't get bogged down in all that stuff. Um, none of it really matters as long as you like, don't use your built-in audio on your computer, just get some form of a buffer there. Um, you can even get like a Logitech headset for like 25 bucks that makes your audio sound much more clear than, uh, than listening, than, than just going straight through your in audio there. So don't get bogged down in the equipment or the tools or the setup or the process. Um, if you're a coach or an entrepreneur, if you're making money, do not, edit your own shows. It's just a time <laughs> suck and it's going to take you entirely too long and it's just going to frustrate you. And it's still not going to be as good as it would be if you just gave it to somebody who knows what the hell they're actually doing. So yeah. don't fall into that trap. Some, some people are like, Oh, you know, I just like to do it myself. So I know how it works. And it's like, well, don't <laughs> because it doesn't yeah, matter. Other shit to focus on. That's more important. Than exactly. That. Exactly. And if you're like at the position right now where you can't afford to outsource it, then you're going to have to learn it. Um, yeah. But just know that that's going to dig into your time that you can take learning the content and actually doing the content piece of it. Um, so that's, that's the biggest thing to remember is like, don't worry about equipment as much. Don't worry about media hosts. Don't worry about editing your show. Don't worry about all the tech stuff. Just get started and focus on your content. The number one, number one, number one, uh, commonality for all successful shows is they release consistent and quality content and they put that content in front of the right audience. So the last piece would be context. So consistent, you have quality and you have context. If you have those three things, you can have a successful show. How long is it going to take to build an audience? I don't know. How big is that audience going to be? I don't know. But you will build an audience if you can offer quality, consistent content and put that in front of the right people. You will 100% build an audience over a period of time if you're willing to do it long enough. Yeah, I think that's another big lesson as well. I think, you know, in, in frankly, in like the microwave world of entrepreneurship, everybody's yeah. looking for the quick and dirty, the, the magic pill, whatever, yep. the, uh, you know, silver bullet, whatever you want to call it. Um, but in the end, there's just, there's just nothing that can compare to consistent work. Consistency, right? yep. And, and exactly. I, think, I think podcasting is like by far in, in the entrepreneurial space, one of the things that I've seen is like the most clear that it shows that. Yeah, exactly. You can't, it's really difficult to uh, beat the system in podcasting. You know, yeah. on YouTube, you can buy fake views and you can buy fake subscribers and same on Instagram. You can buy fake followers and likes and, you know, all that kind of stuff. You can fake it a lot of different places. Podcasts are one of those places where like, you can't really fake it very much. Like yeah. you either do it well or you don't do it well. And so the only way to do it well is to continue releasing consistent content, even if nobody's listening. That's the biggest part. And it's, mo it's really difficult to do because I've been there. Um, it's really yeah. difficult to do when you're you know, pouring your heart and soul into something and it just seems like it's just crickets on the other end. But um, you just got to be willing to you know, commit to a certain period of time before you throw and, in the and towel. Part of that, I think part of that goes back to what you were saying. It's like you tell this to your, your clients all the time, like, hey, be okay with sucking right now. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right? Just earn, be, be, just understand you're going to earn your stripes for a while. You yeah. know what I mean? And you okay like, with sucking right now because nobody's listening anyways. Yeah, and, <laughs> yeah exactly. And, exactly. And then when you got people listening, you'll be good enough for it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, best example of this is look at Gary Vaynerchuk, man. It's, 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 he's got to be one of the prime examples of this just because everybody knows who he is. So it's a perfect example to use. He started Wine Library TV and he would get like 112 views, you know, 76 views. Uh, you know, 127 views. Like it was, he started, when he started Wine Library TV on YouTube, nobody paid attention, nobody listened. But he focused on who did listen. And that's the problem is that everybody always wants to focus on what they don't have rather than being grateful for what they do have. And um, so I I downloaded a a iPhone wallpaper from Gary Vee when I started my show. And it's just a one, a greater than sign and a zero. Basically just reaffirming to me that like, look, if somebody is willing to pay attention, if somebody is willing to listen to my message, if somebody is listening to my podcast or reaching out and saying, hey, this is a good episode, if somebody's paying attention, like I need to put my heart and soul into yeah. helping that one person. Because if you don't treat your audience of one as if, like if you don't give that audience of one the same quality time and attention that you would give to an audience of a million, then you'll never have a million. Then you don't deserve a million. Exactly. Yeah. I, it's, that's, I think I want to sit in that for a second. Cause I still remember when I was first starting off in my coaching business, I remember I had a Facebook group and I did a Facebook live and I had two people view it mm-hmm. yep. and it was heartbreaking. <laughs> and I, I, I still like, obviously like that was a big, like it was a big sucker punch to me. And I was just like, Oh my God, I'm so bad. Yeah. And I remember the next week I got on a sales call. And one of like the person that got on the sales call was like, I watched your video and it just really connected with me. Hmm. And it was like, it reminded me that like, I viewed this as a number rather than just like exactly what you just mentioned. There were two people, Mm -hmm. two real life people on the other side of this that watched that and emotionally like invested their time, their focus, their energy, everything into what I was saying. Hmm. And like, I, I realized at that moment, I was like, same thing. I don't, you know, I don't care if it's five people watching a hundred people watching a thousand, you know, 10,000, it doesn't make a difference Mm -hmm. because they're real people. And every single one of those people, like I can imagine myself being on the other side and actually really like really investing in caring. Yeah. And barring any sort of one-off crazy examples, everybody started at that same position. Yeah. Everybody. I had yeah. a guy, I had a guy, I don't know. Joel Marion is the, the one difference. <laughs> yeah. Podcast, it went like this. It's yeah. Like, right. But I mean, business. that's because like, he has a giant email list to send. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, but, you know, but when he launched his first book, it was crickets. You know what yeah. I mean? So like yeah. even people like that, you go back far enough and they had the same issues. They had the same struggles as, as we all do. Um, but, uh, I remember I running, I was running some ads maybe five, six months ago and this, um, this dude was hating on him and he came over my profile and saw that my Facebook page, uh, cause I, my, I don't, I don't ever like buy likes for my Facebook page. So, um, I have like 30 something thousand Instagram followers, but I don't spend a lot of time with my Facebook page. So I have like 4,200 people that like it or something. Yeah. And he goes, um, and he like brought that up on in like, he was trolling some of my ads and and brought that up and was just like, you know, you know, why do you, why do you feel like you can spend money on ads? You only have 4,000 followers or something like that. And I was like, first of all, that logic doesn't even track. (laughs) Yeah. That's like the reason that you spend money on ads. You're a dumb person. But also, um, it was kind of like a pat on the back for myself because it was just another reminder that like, you know what, man, you're totally right. I do have only 4,000 likes on this page, but like everybody started at 4,000 likes at some point, like everybody's crossed this threshold at some point. Yeah. Um, so it's just a matter of keeping on going. And that's what those people did. All the people that have all them, the millions of followers and all that stuff, like that's something that they did. They just kept going no yeah. matter the naysayers, the haters, the people trying to get them to stop. Um, you know, they just kept trucking away and kept providing content and kept helping the people that were willing to be helped from day one. Um, and, and, and eventually that starts to really turn into a lot of people, especially if you do right by people and you genuinely help people and they start to see results from advice that you give them and they start to see results. And especially for like the people in your community, bro, like your coaches listening to this right now and your coach, you know, and you can start getting some results for people, regardless if they paid you, you know, a hundred bucks for your time or they paid you a thousand bucks for your time. If you can start getting some results and you can start building a reputation within your own industry that, Hey, if somebody pays you money, they're going to see results. Then that over time is only going to do good things for you. Yeah. You Got to stick with it. That consistency and that time is like one of the most important things. I love yeah. that, man. 
Yeah. And it's just going to take, it's just, it's going to take time and you have to be okay with the fact that some people are going to see it faster than other people. Cause I think people just get discouraged, especially nowadays. I think like, people don't realize like that person may have it, just like what we we're just talking about with like, with Joel, right? Like his, his rise when he first sold that ebook, right? Mm -hmm. It was like, you don't see the, the years of effort that he put in before that. Exactly. Yeah. To get to that point, like yep. the networking and the time and the giving and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. That, like all you see is the meteoric rise. You don't mm -hmm. see the actual work that's been going on prior to that point. Yep, exactly. And same, you know, with the podcasting stuff, like everything that I've done has been, you know, everybody, that's one of the main questions that I get is like, how have you seen everything that you've done from absolutely zero a couple of years ago to where it is now? That seems like a short period of time. And intrinsically, yes, it is it's in, in just this industry, right? Like two and a half years in just this industry, like it seems like that. But I was also doing door to door sales for four or five years prior to that yeah so like that's a lot of cutting my teeth and you sharpened your, you sharpened the shit out of your teeth yeah man. like communication skills like selling you know all of those pieces uh that allowed me to read people better like all of that stuff played into my ability to catch on to this stuff faster than I caught on to the other stuff. Yeah. And every time you do that, you're taking more in with you to the next thing. There's always work that goes into it. Always. Beautiful. I love that, man. A uh, couple, couple last questions for you and then, uh, then we'll call it. But a um, uh, quick one. If you were to go back to you first starting off, what's one piece of advice you would give yourself? Start sooner. Oh, I, I um, yeah, I, I launched my show in August of 2017, but I knew that I wanted to start a show in September, October of 2016. So it was almost an entire full year before I hit the launch button on my podcast. And what I tell people now, bro, is like every day you delay your launch is another day you delay your success. Yeah. So if you want to just keep delaying your success, then be my guest, man. Like keep putting it off and, and keep, you know, having the excuses that like, well, I can't figure out the platform. And like, I don't know what microphone to buy yeah. or like, you know, for you and your coaching business, like, I don't know how I'm going to communicate with my people or like what books to recommend. Like just freaking get started. The only like, way you're going to find out is by jumping in the damn pool. <laughs> exactly. And every day you like, I look at that all the time, man. I'm looking at it like, man, if I would have started in 2016, I would be an entire year ahead of where I am right now. And I've gotten pretty far in two and a half years. So if it would have been three and a half years, oh God, like imagine how, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. like, that's the, that's really my only regret from starting is like, man, I wish I would have just, I wish I would have just like done it and, and been okay with figuring it out along the way. I love that. Uh, question number two, who's the best interview that you've ever had and why? It's a really good question. Um, and one that I don't even know how it's possible for me to answer, but, um, I'll, I'll give, <laughs> but I'll we're going to make you answer it anyways. Yeah. I'll give you, I'll give you, uh, a, a recent one just because it's really fresh in my mind. Cause we've been promoting it a bunch this week. Um, and why it meant so much to me because like in terms of the actual interviews, I mean, I got like 20 that are my top 20 and it's hard to like pick yeah. It's like, you know, which, which baby do you like better? You know what I mean? Um, By but, the way, uh, in case you were wondering, I have made people on this show tell me which of their children is better. <laughs> so, so uh, like, you're not uh, the only one that I'm yeah. asking to pick their favorite baby. That's fair. That's fair then. I have to say, I have to say I've not run into that before. So that's a very fair <laughs> question of you. Um, yeah, I, I, I would say uh, one of the ones that meant a lot to me was the one I just recently did with Tommy Lahren. Uh, she's a political yeah. commentator and ruffled a lot of feathers in her days. And uh, there's probably somebody listening to this right now that's like, oh, I hate her. Um, and I completely understand all that stuff. She's a very polarizing figure. But regardless of what you think about it, you got to be willing to respect the, what she's done at such a young age and to be a um, nationally syndicated host on Fox News Network at 27 years old is pretty freaking incredible no matter what your you know political you know what what side of the political spectrum you you end up on um the reason though that i picked that one is that i looked back um when we tagged her on instagram we when we released the episode i looked back in my dms that i had with her and i found a dm from october of 2017 which was two months after i launched my show of me initially reaching out to her to try to get her on yeah. And it was crickets. I never heard anything back and I just was completely ignored. Um, so it was a really, really cool thing for me to open up that DM and look at that and be like, ha, that's funny that I reached out like that early on, but it's also really cool that I was actually able to get her on two and a half years later yeah. um, and stay persistent enough 
to keep finding creative ways to reach out, which I eventually did and was able to actually get her on. Um, so that, that was a cool one. I have another one coming up that's very similar. Like almost, I think I reached out the same exact month, October of 2017 is the first time I reached out. But I've been constant email communication. I got in touch with her team immediately, but it's been um, two and a half years of being like, you know, pushed back and, you know, a couple times ignored. And then other times just saying like, oh, we're not doing interviews right now, just getting the run around and still staying consistent and reaching out. And this last time that I did, her assistant literally, like literally got back to me and was like, hey, Travis, I was wondering when I was going to hear from you again. Um, <laughs> she was like, she was like, at this point, your persistence is something that I just can't do anything but respect. And I really, you know, appreciate what you are doing. Um, uh, I, I, I'm going to do my best to get, to get her on the show. And then like three days later, I didn't even reach out to her. She emailed me and she was like, Hey, just to give you an, just to give you a heads up, I got verbal confirmation, um, and a commitment from, you know, from this person. I got that today earlier. Um, after I talked to her about you for a little while, was like bragging about you for being how, so like I created an advocate inside you of this person's a own raving team. fan Trojan yeah. horse in yeah. this, in this company. Right. Exactly. And over the course of, like I said, two and a half years of being persistent and not being offended when they said no, because I understand that her time is valuable and uh, she can't say yes to everything. So like you can't get offended when you get no's from people like that. If they, if it's an important enough inter interview to you, which for me is a pretty big one. So I just like kept at it, kept at it, kept at it, kept at it, stayed professional um, and kept doing what I was doing. Cause a lot of times people they hinge their entire success on this one thing happening. And then when that person says no, they're like, well, there goes my entire idea. Yeah. It's like, well, okay, well, if you're giving them the, the idea that the train's only going to leave the station if they're on it, then they're going to take their time to get on the train. Yeah. But if you give somebody the idea that the train's leaving the station with or without you, they're going to want to get on themselves. They're going to make a decision, yeah. Exactly. And so that's kind of, that's kind of what it was. It's like the train was moving along without her. Like every time I'd reach out, I would throw some, uh, some names of new people that I had on. Since yeah, I, I ju just had that. this person, this person. Yeah. Yeah. This person just said, yes, this person just agreed to come on. We just hit this benchmark. We just, um, had this article written about us in Forbes. We just had that. Like every time I had something like that, I would throw it out there in an, in a new reach out message, um, staying persistent and just like saying, Hey, happy to share the message. Um, and, uh, and, and it, and it paid off eventually. So I would say like the, the Tommy one for sure, cause it's already in the books. And then this one will probably be one of my new favorites too, just because, um, it's, it's just because I'll be able to use that story for a long time. So selfishly, I'll be able to use that story for a lot of case studies. So I love it, man. I love it. Travis, thanks for, thanks for joining us today. Where can people learn more about you, more about, uh, build your network and everything you're doing? Yeah, man. Uh, Travischapel.com is kind of the hub. So we're, we're going to be put, doing some major construction on that site just with a new show launch. And then also with the launch of my agency, World Class Media, um, which we basically just produce done for you podcast for busy entrepreneurs that are just too busy to do it themselves. Um, so with the launch of that agency and with the launch of the new show, we're doing some rebranding on the site. Um, but it is still up there and you can find that at Travischapel.com, C-H-A-P-P-E-L-L.com. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Travis. Uh, and for everybody else out there listening, make sure to go show Travis some love. Go check that stuff out. Travis, thanks again for coming. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me.